properties. Is this picture really Adela Francesca? I think so. The second Earl brought back several paintings from her. <laughs> Let me come to you tonight, please. I can't think what I have said that has led you to believe. I don't know when we'll meet again, so let it be tonight. Mr. Pamuk, I will not repeat your words to my father, since I should hate to see you cast out into the darkness. But can we agree to consider them unsaid? Now, if you'll excuse me, I shall rejoin my mother and sisters. He won't break the intel. The unknown cousin gets everything, and Mary's inheritance will be the same as it always was. Oh, how was I to know when the lawyer no, you turned won't up? I thought you did the right thing to telegraph me. It's just not going to come off. So what now? Well, you, you know how I'm fixed. I have to have an heiress if it means going to New York to find one. What about me? You... You will wish me well. You said you'd find me a job if I wanted to leave. Do you? I want to be a valet. I'm sick of being a footman. Yeah, Thomas, I don't need a valet. I, I thought you were getting rid of the new one here. Well, I've done it, but I'm not sure Carson's gonna let me take over. I want to be with you. Mm. I just can't see it working, can you? <laughs> we don't seem to have the basis of a sudden master relationship, do we? You came here to be with me. Among other reasons. And one swallow doesn't make a summer. Are you forgetting something? What? <laughs> Are you threatening me? Because of a youthful dalliance, a few, a few weeks of madness in a London season, you wouldn't hold that against me, surely? I would if I have to. And who will leave a greedy footman over the words of a duke? If you're not careful, you'll end up behind bars. I've got proof. Mm. You mean these? It seems marvellous to me. You leave service, go into government. Now you're married to a prominent man. 20th century story. I agree. Welcome back. I just feel stupid for not recognising you. Well, why should you? We never spoke. <laughs> you worked here for two years and we never spoke to you. We're the ones in the wrong. No, I, I didn't mean it like that. It was a good job, but not good enough to stay. I didn't want to be in service my whole life, that's all. So you found an opportunity and took it. Brava. But I didn't find it. Lady Sybil found it. Sybil helped you? Yes. But she did everything. 
She looked out for the jobs, lent me clothes, drove me to the interviews. But one time, I remember the horse went lame and we both got stuck in the mud and... <laughs> Oh, the talking we had to do when we got back. <laughs> I remember we were so worried, but she never said a thing about you. Well, it was our secret pact. Mm -hmm. And then one day she cornered the man who was installing the telephone here, and uh, that's how I got my first job in business. She wouldn't let me into the library while you met him, so that was you. Did you keep in contact? Christmas cards and such. And then I heard the news. I'll never forget her. Her kindness changed my life. What a lovely way to remember her. She was a lovely person. Darling Sybil, thank you, Barrow, for reminding us of Mrs. Harding's time here. My pleasure, my lady. But Sir Richard, you don't have Richard, to. Richard, please. You see, I want you to marry me. Why? Because I think very highly of you. Very highly? Goodness. I mean it. I think we'd do well together. We could be a good team. Now that sounds better. But I can't help thinking that tradition demands a little mention of love. Oh, I can talk about love and moon and June and all the rest of it if you wish. But we're more than that. We're strong and sharp. And we can build something worth having you and I, if you'll let us. Your proposal is improving by leaps and bounds. You must give me some time. But I promise to think about it properly. I'm counting on it. Is Lady Flincher all right? Cora, would you go and help Susan? Look, she seems in rather a queer way. There is something that you must know, and I feel most uncomfortable not having told you before now. We don't want any deathbed confession, Susan. Remember, this is not your day. I'm sorry, Aunt Violet, I think it's time. In fact, it's long overdue. What is? Uh, no, please. Don't... Shrimpy and I are in the process of getting a divorce. What? I'm afraid it is going to be all over the papers, and as things stand, it must involve you and your family. God! It... Thank you, Lady Flincher. Or may I call you Susan? We are forewarned, and so now we will be forearmed. You can't me. Father, just please, I go beg on you. If you do anything to stop this marriage, anything at all, I will leave you. And then you will have a scandal worthy of the name. I might have some wine. You've not had any. Stowe, what's the matter with you? What the devil's going on? Rachel, mm? explain this. Explain what? Why am I not being given anything decent to eat? I don't know. Stowe? It was your lordship's order. What are you talking about? What is the matter with you tonight? Mr. Daunt left a note for the cook saying you'd ask. I never said a thing to Daunt. And why are you so rude to Mr. Branson? Really, there's no need the for The cook it. told me you had requested simple... Stowe. Someone's played a joke on us. And when you got the note, did it look like Daunt's writing? I never saw the note. And obviously, Mrs. Brennan is not familiar... What? Do you dare to use the word obviously when you contradict me? Now, take this away, fetch me some dinner, and conduct yourself more professionally in the future. And bring that back, you stupid fool. We're not shooting tomorrow, so would you like to see the estate? What fun that would be, don't you think so, Robert? <clears throat> Goodness. He does get so rattled by things. I'm not very keen on your butler, so I'm afraid I'd rather enjoyed it. Well, maybe, but Stowe's a proud chap. He won't find that easy to forgive. 
I don't think Barrow will much like being called a stupid fool. You've forgotten something. It's not your maid. I waited till she'd gone. You must leave. Mr. Brickley, you must leave. I hope I didn't wake you. No, not at all, my lord. Miss Baxter's only just come down, so her ladyship will still be awake. Mr. Bricker, I've asked you twice now. Will you please go? You said yourself. Who knows when I'll be back? Mr. Bricker. Don't pretend, Cora. You know something's happened between us. You know things have changed now. I feel it, and I know you do. Did someone last cherish you? When did someone even listen to you? I've seen you with your family, ignored and passed over. None of this is any reason. I'm glad you're still awake. The dinner was over early. It seemed easier to come back. I'm sorry if it's a disappointment. It isn't. Mr. Bricker is just leaving. I'm not here at Lady Grantham's invitation. Then will you please leave at mine? Robert, let him go. You can't be surprised. When you chose to ignore a woman like Cora, you must have known not every man would be as blind as you. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop! It. Stop. So sorry, Daddy. Father and I just playing a stupid game, and we knocked over a lamp. Oh, if you're sure. I'm sure, Puppet. Good night. Sleep tight. I think that is my exit too. Wait. 